Welcome to r slash malicious compliance. Today's first story is called, I know I authorized overtime. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe. Let's begin. The last job I had was an overall mess. But the particular manager I had wanted to try and introduce more structure and rules to the place. He'd moved here from out of state and had a long resume of help desk supervisory experience and at first seemed like a decent, skilled guy. Then came the overtime policy. Previously, overtime was allowed without needing approval because sometimes calls run long. As long as it wasn't excessive. Excessive meant more than 5 hours and even then, all you had to do was explain what took so long and management was happy to approve it. Sometimes tech stuff gets messy and takes a while. The previous manager never had any issues approving it. And the CIO never had any issues approving that approval. One of the new manager's changes was that all overtime had to be approved. And if it wasn't approved, it meant telling a customer you had to cut a support call short when your shift was over. Spoiler, it was rarely approved. This does not only sound like a terrible idea, it was. But, okay, I'll help you dig that grave for yourself. I ended up getting a call about an hour before my shift ended and it was a call that was a bug in our software that was fixed by a particular Windows update. The clinic closed at 5.30, and the office manager asked us to do it after hours. I talked to the manager. He gives me written authorization to work late and get Windows updates run on around 30 computers. I do that, and it takes roughly 4 hours as the clinic's internet connection started to bottom out if I had more than 4 or 5 remote sessions going at one time. No big deal. I get it done, submit my time punch for that day and think nothing of it. He calls me in the next morning, I can't approve this much overtime. The CIO would never authorize it. I remind him he authorized overtime for this and that he knew it was one of the larger clinics. He says, well, you should have just started some, clocked out, checked on them, then clocked back in when others were ready. You didn't need to babysit them. I'll authorize one hour. I explained to him that that's a stupid idea and also that it's not legal to pay me for time worked when he authorized that time and I have it in writing. He says he doesn't care and I'm only getting one hour of overtime authorized. Fine. From now on, I will clock in exactly at 8 and out at 5. He snaps at me with, good, that's the policy. And I leave. Instead of reporting him to the CIO, who I was on friendly terms with, right away, I spend a few weeks collecting things like really angry doctors and clinic staff. And every time they got understandably angry that I was dropping a call when the issue wasn't resolved. I'd apologize and tell them it was the manager's fault, as it was a policy he implemented. And not only is it illegal for me to keep working without the company paying me, as I was an hourly employee, I flat out wasn't going to work for free. I suggested they send an email to the CIO and include the manager on it, telling them exactly what they thought of the new policy. And how it affected their practice and their patient's opinion of the clinic. About a week later, the CIO paid a surprise visit and wanted to speak to me. He asked me what on earth was going on. He was getting all these angry emails from clinic sites saying the techs were dropping calls immediately at 5, regardless of what time it was at the clinic or if the issue was fixed or not. And they all said the same thing about it being the manager's policy. I explained the policy to the CIO and also told him about the overtime incident. And he just lost it. He got up, opened the door to the empty office he was using and yelled across the whole floor for the manager in question to get in here right now. In that meeting, the manager got torn to pieces, forced to apologize to me and marched out of the office like a child by the CIO. The CIO then called everyone over, made him apologize to everyone else for the policy, asked us all to email him dates and actual overtime hours. He wants to check the time clock and see if they coincided with dates that the manager had edited. He ended with telling the manager, you're lucky I don't fire you right now. But, if I were you, I'd consider maybe not selling your house just yet. The CIO also sent out a department-wide email, stating that the manager's overtime policy was revoked effective immediately. And that we were going back to the original method of dealing with overtime. He also reiterated that he would have absolutely no issues with approving any overtime, as long as it was clear that it was necessary to get a clinic's systems back up and running or the clinic had specifically asked that the work be done after hours, which is what the old policy had been anyway. The manager ended up resigning before they fired him. And in one conversation we had after he left, he swore it was because the CIO randomly decided he hated me. Sure. If even this can not show him his mistakes, I think nothing ever will. After this, he will find the next job at make the same things over and over again. I'm sorry for all the people that have to deal with him or anybody like this. He seems like a real male Karen. What do you think? Comment below. The next story is called, No Sick Days Allowed? So I worked in a bike shop for 8 years. It was a brilliant and awful job. Awful being that I hated my boss. 
proper yerk when it came to your well-being. If you were sick, he'd drive to your house and knock on your door and try to convince you to come to work. This was mainly because he'd wanted to leave early in the afternoon to do paperwork and couldn't leave the other staff member on their own. There were only three of us, including the manager. I gave in to this bullying for years, coming into work, throwing up out the back door whilst selling a bike was one of my personal favorites. Especially when the customer expressed his worry to my manager and got laughed off. Anyway, one December, a virus was going around and everyone was getting it. Obviously, dealing with hundreds of customers a week, I was bound to get it. I got it, and I got it bad. I ended up bedridden on my day off, and texted my boss that I wouldn't be in tomorrow, as I'd need to go to the doctors. My phone starts ringing off the hook, messages left, right and center. Then, the knocking at my door. I couldn't answer it, as I could barely walk downstairs to do so. He was there for a good 20 minutes before he finally gave up. He messaged me later on that night, saying if I didn't come in, then I'd lose a day's pay, because I was on a part-time contract at the time but was working full-time hours. Then it hit me. I can really screw him over here. I didn't need the money at the time, as I worked in a pub on a night as well, which topped my wages up quite generously. So I messaged him back, no problem. I'll go on to my contracted hours. See you in two days, when my shift starts again. All I got back from him was, ha ha, okay. I came in two days later, still in an awful condition but able to get on with some work whilst coughing my lungs up. He starts reeling off the Christmas orders. Now, for a bike shop, it's a military operation of booking so many bikes in a day to build and be collected. You'd get 10 to 12 bikes in to build for the next day, then make sure today's bikes were picked up or moved back into storage. That alone is a full day's job, on top of selling bikes and parts. We also did car auto parts like bulbs and batteries. So in the winter, you can imagine how many of those we were changing on top. So you'll build around 220 to 270 bikes in December alone, just for Christmas, on top of any other sales you might get on the day. So roll on my first day back, get my bikes built, get customers served, all sorted. This was Wednesday, so I tell my boss that I'll see him on Friday, as that was my next contracted day. Say what? No, you'll be here tomorrow, got a lot on this month. No, I'm part-time, I won't be in, the contract says so. Stop being daft, get here tomorrow. Sure enough, I don't turn in. Come Christmas Eve, it's the biggest mess you've ever seen. Bikes everywhere, no one collecting them and those who are would find that their bikes haven't been built. Worst Christmas ever recorded in that shop. No one was paying for bikes because they couldn't collect them due to not being built or they're in storage 15 minutes away. And the boss can't get out of the shop to go grab them for the customer. So guess who got handed a lovely shiny full-time contract with sick days, a higher wage and an apology on New Year's Eve? I was there another year, and I never got bugged for taking a sick day again. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content. Let me know what you think about the stories in the comment section below. Also, let me know of any subreddits you would like to listen to. Currently working on a second channel for more content. Have a great day. Bye bye.